as someone who's been in Jeremy Clarkson's shoes, albeit I didn't have my own show on Amazon and nor was I running Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for ITV, someone who's actually been there and had this exact thing happen to them, I thought it might be useful to share what actually happens from a kind of Clarkson point of view. And I think if we could just aim for a point of agreement at the front end, it's that Jeremy Clarkson has a column in The Sun and he wrote something lots of people disagree with or don't like. And you can have views on whether it's right or wrong. You can have views on whether he's said the wrong thing or it's a bad thing or it's a... But let's just agree as a, as a bottom line that lots of people don't like what he said. And that would have been me. I wrote a column that is still used, was used last week to get me removed from stuff. So that column was written 20 years ago and it was used last week in a petition to try and get me removed from doing stand-up in a small town theatre. Okay, so the thing that should be pointed out at the front end that no one's really saying is that Jeremy Clarkson's column in The Sun or The Sunday Times or wherever was really well loved. People loved that column, people loved his column in The Sunday Times, and it was doing brilliantly well for the paper. And what happens at times like that, as with me, is that day before the column that was that kicked this all off ran, you get the managing editor and the editor telling you, great column this week, Katie, thanks a lot. And that's precisely what happened to me. Uh, the editor of The Sun and the managing editor who used to kind of handle me said, great column this week. The column goes live, all shit kicks off, and then a few things happen. And this is a kind of standard formula, but to be in the line of this fire is quite extreme. So the first thing uh, is that, so you've just been thanked, you've been told great column this week. Then the shit hits the fan. But let's remember that when you file a column, you don't just like type it and it goes straight into the newspaper. You don't just type it and it goes straight online. It has to go through a, a desk, if not two desks of people who are receiving it, checking it, proofing it. Very often, if you're someone like me, it goes to legal so legal have to see it and check that legally there's nothing that the paper's going to be taken to court for. And then it makes its way to the editor or managing editor for their ultimate sign off. And in my case, it very often gets shared amongst the other people on the writing because columns like Jeremy's or back in the day mine were the most read. And other people that wrote for the paper used to get shouted at because relatively their uh, columns were a bit shit. My point is that it goes through three or four levels of people before it ever can get to the newspaper. So when the shit hits the fan, it isn't just like one or two people and then that builds and then it's building. It's coordinated. It's a coordinated attack on you. I knew that I was about to be taken out because someone inside The Guardian told me that I became the subject of the morning conference and it was a coordinated attack across The Guardian newspaper and everyone associated with it that I would be taken down. So for me to be removed from, say, the Daily Mail or um, at my LBC show or whatever, it was heads of political organisations, it was heads of charities, it was a group letter that I think they had on standby, ready to go, from the Board of Deputies. Brendan Cox was involved specifically with Save the Children because he has a lot of political links. And then it was heads of Labour Party and other political groups signing a letter. So I think these group signatory letters like Clarkson has from MPs are basically sat ready to go. And if you want to look like the good guy, you put your name against it because it will be better for you to be in with the mob than to not have anything to do with it or to say, I'm a politician, I don't have a view about a newspaper column in the sun, which is what you would really want your MP to be doing. Number four is that jealousy plays a massive part in all of this. So all the people that are jealous of your success or your column or your shows or your radio show or Jeremy's stint on ITV or the fact that he's well loved, all the jealousy now gets to play itself out. So you can be anti the column because you're jealous of Jeremy Clarkson. And that's precisely the bit that starts to grate because people, you know that people who seem to be your allies are actively now hoping that they might get whatever comes from the fallout of this. So a world of jealousy about your success 
is a massive motivator for the mob who begrudge the success that you've had, and particularly with Jeremy Clarkson, because I guess he's one of the most successful presenters of all time. People can argue about that in the sidelines. It doesn't matter. There's a weird thing that happens, and this is point five, is that people around you who have enjoyed your success, who have thanked you the day before for the column, people who have supported you or encouraged you or even texted you before you write your column to write, go for it, as in really let rip, they run for cover. Everybody near this thing runs for the hill. So in my Sun column case, people I filed that column to run for the hills as if it's got nothing to do with them. I've heard my old managing editor on his Times radio show act as if he doesn't even know who I am. And for a long time there, we were really great mates. Like there were things that went on, but act like they don't know who you are because they're running for cover. And in my case, actually, brilliantly, my editor kind of stood by me. So when Murdoch called from a helicopter to have me fired, because there were 300,000 petition names under me being fired from my son column, my editor stood by me, which was bonkers. So I have actually been fired by Murdoch. It's why I'm not allowed on British TV now and can't be on something like GB News, for example, because Murdoch fired me and yet I wasn't let go from my job. That's uh, beside the point. So others smell an opportunity. So now Jeremy Clarkson's in free fall for a bit, people smell an opportunity. This ties in with the jealousy point, but people see it, maybe there'll be a column job going. Maybe there'll be a job going ITV. Maybe I can pick up some followers. And people are just on Twitter to voice out that they think it's shocking what he did, that they think it's an outrage, but actually what they're doing is just self-promoting on Twitter and what they'll be doing, and they'll know this. And if you're listening, I know. I know what you're doing. You're looking at your likes and your retweets. And every time you say, well, Jeremy Clarkson, terrible man, blah, 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 blah. You're counting retweets and you're counting likes. And I genuinely think if you're the sort of person who wants to sort of uh, indicate to the mob that you're with them and then you're counting likes online, I truly believe that your mental health and your emotional well-being is at serious risk. You are in peril if your validity is given to you by retweets and likes on Twitter. I genuinely believe that as someone who's gone through all of that. People say they want an apology. They don't. The mob is never satiated and it is not satiated with an apology. It's why I now have these. Never apologise, right? Never apologise, never explain, because it will never be enough. If you apologise, it will be too little. It will be too late. Oh, you only apologise because you were asked to. Oh, that apology sucked. You didn't actually say sorry. You didn't prostrate yourself on the ground. You didn't flagellate with a cat of nine tails and, you know, cut your own dick off to show how sorry you were for being a male. And how dare you have white skin? Cut it off immediately. An apology will never be enough. People want you fired. But even that won't satiate them either. They just want to keep pushing it till they can get every last drop of blood out of you. And when the 300,000 signed the petition to have me fired from my son column and Murdoch caved to the mob and rang my editor from his helicopter to have me fired, my editor wouldn't fire me because he had told me the day before the column went live, this was about stop the votes, it was a great column. And that's probably the one time, in fact, probably the only time in my life where someone has stood firm when it would have been much more prudent for them to cave, although it was agreed that I would be got rid of in the next hiring round. Um, the people who are looking for tidbits, so like Anne Widdicombe told me, when she heard my LBC show was gone, it was taken from me, she was like, oh, well, obviously that was an outrage that your show was taken, but I rang James at LBC to see if he wanted me to run your show for you. So that's what happens. People who are, you know, definitely with you because you shouldn't have lost your show. In the same breath, they are ringing the guy that employed you to ask if they can have your slot because they're jealous of what you had. They want it. And as much as they don't think you should have been got rid of, they see an opportunity for themselves. And, and that's how life is. Um, 
a knock-on effect. Yes. So with the Clarkson column, you can say, well, what he wrote was terrible and he should be punished for that. And yada, 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 whatever. But the reality is that it has a, a stifling, a dampening effect on free speech elsewhere. We don't have anything like free speech in this country. And this is yet another damning indication of why people won't even have to think before they speak inside their own homes. I can't say that. I can't criticize that. I'm not allowed to think this. If I think this, the mob will come for me and they'll take my job. And, you know, it, it's almost like um, it's almost like dominoes or or bowling, you know, pins. If they knock one over, so eradicate me from the face of of, of human discourse, medium dis, media discourse in the UK, they'll come for the next one le next. Where's Rod Liddell these days? I don't know. So now they come for Clarkson, a bigger fish. And who's left? Who's left to say what the ordinary Brit might think in one of their funny, quiet, private moments? Who's left? Who else can withstand this sort of shit? And why would you withstand this kind of crap if you've got all the money in the world and you don't need to? And this is, um, I think that the, the it, this is going to sound like um, sour grapes, and and I actually don't think it is. It's an observation I've had for for a decade or two now, and um, so I guess it's partly with if you throw the dogs red meat, like my own dogs, if they have red meat or the wind gets in their ears, they go a little bit crazy, and this is what happens with the mob. So if you throw them oh, Jeremy's been fired from this, or he's lost his column, or he loses this or that. It doesn't stop this thing, it makes it worse. You're throwing red meat to dogs and the pack <laughs> pants for more, and they look for their next thing. <laughs> it excites them, like it does something to their weird endorphins that are kind of got moving by the hurt that can be caused to someone else, the doing down of their adversary, <laughs> and they'll come for the next. There's that. And then there's this weird thing that no one really addresses because the climate and the environment in the media is such you can't address it because it doesn't get taken seriously, certainly not by someone like me. But there is the redemption of the male. And actually, it leaves me hopeful at this point, because whereas a female may just be removed from her radio show or column or Daily Mail when someone kicks off or the mob kicks off or the chief rabbi and Brandon Cox and the board of deputies, it results in the removal of a female and a fairly insignificant celebrity, whatever. There is the redemption of the male. And you watch. I mean, you can say it's sour grapes, Katie. You, you just cross. You're just being a pissy woman. Fine. But have a look. Piers Morgan, Daily Mirror front page, phone hacking, relentless, endless examples of career ending moments that never result in the end of the career. In fact, bum chums with Murdoch and Lord Rothmere and the rest. I'm hopeful that the redemption of the male will work in Clarkson's favour because he is such a well-loved guy. He is such a big hit. He will endure and survive. And I hope to God he doesn't go anywhere near anything that looks like an apology. And, uh, and, and that's my hope is number one, fully in support of Clarkson because you didn't want to read that shit you didn't need to read it. See these things here? These are eyes. And actually, you control them. And if you didn't want to read it, you didn't have to. And if you didn't want to be outraged about it, you could have not looked. And if you didn't want to get the likes and the clicks and the retreats, you wouldn't have probably involved yourself with it at all. But you're looking for some kind of leverage for yourself, possibly because you were jealous of his success, or you get in a sort of endorphin rush of the failure of others. And this is repeated over and over in life at every level. It doesn't have to be at this national level and a media landscape. This is every day in every workplace, in every office, on every WhatsApp group. All of this weird human behavior goes along. And I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what it's like on the other side of this and what plays out every time. And I can tell you personally, that it is not the 300,000 or the mob or the 1.2 million that what you've got rid of or the haters or the tweeters or the people on your side that say, she should never have written this, but it does say something about free speech. People, the boys on, on your side who use you to write another column, distancing themselves, self-inoculating themselves against you, even though they know you, but using it to self-promote. It is always the people who know you personally 
it is always the unkindness of those you know that cuts deepest and hurts most of all. Um, so I wish Clarkson well. Um, uh, good on you, everybody who is trying to quietly support him in an age where you're not allowed to have an opinion. Um, and this is really uh, uh, an insight into how the mob works and how their lust uh, for blood will never be satiated. And for them, this is just an encouragement to pursue their next victim. OK, a look behind the curtain uh, of the media landscape here in the UK.